Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. Now, if this is the second video of mine that you've watched and you're enjoying the content, then maybe click that subscribe button. Also, while you're there, just, you know, tickle that like button. It likes to be tickled. Who doesn't like to be tickled? Well, I don't like to be tickled, but the like button likes to be tickled. Anyways, on to the story. The Insane Concept of Human Justice and Its Unforeseen Consequences Written by that 2009 weird emo kid. All throughout the galaxy, humanity was famous for its strange notion of justice. Not just because anyone thought that it was admirable, but because they couldn't decipher why anyone would bother enforcing it in the first place, which made humans look mentally unhinged. It all stemmed from something they valued highly, the unfathomable idea called friendship. One could attack a human and gamble on whether or not they would seek revenge. Harming their friends, however, was a surefire way of earning their wrath. Even their pets were given this honor, a fact that baffled all who learned it. Every known culture, aside from theirs, had achieved spaceflight with a crude sense of fairness and couldn't grasp anything outside transactional relationships. Vengeance, negotiation, appeasement. These concepts were all well understood by the galactic community at large. In fact, they were the bedrock of the Federation. Their tenuous alliance between worlds was built on a simple premise, the accumulation of power for its own sake. If one could get the upper hand over the others, they were expected to abuse it to its fullest. Then everyone else would band together in order to oppose them, perpetuating the need for a coalition. This cycle was named the Rhythm of Unity. It served as the basis of all political theory in the galaxy for over 5,000 years, maintaining relative stability when the alternative was tyranny or mass extinction. Every faction accepted it on an instinctive level, even if no one said it aloud, which was why the galaxy fell into chaos when humanity disrupted it. Oh, gave a shit, shouted Sol. He looked emaciated behind the energy field of his jail cell, with a shaved head and a bruised face. They hadn't fed him properly since his arrest, or even given him medical care, a clear violation of several treaties. His grey eyes, however, were as defiant as always. I'd rather die than be a snitch! Ambassador Clark furrowed his brow. This idiot hadn't matured a bit since they last met. I never said that you had to confess. Besides, with all the charges you have, you'll be lucky to get anything less than a lifetime sentence. Oh, yeah. They're not offering a plea deal. The Federation wants you specifically, not any of your cohorts. Sol squinted for a moment, confused. Then why the hell are you lecturing me about this rhythm of unity crap? Because you need to understand the delicate position we're in. Humanity's mere presence has shifted the balance of power in ways that we didn't intend. What we call friendship, they call opportunistic maneuvering. The more we endear ourselves to our allies, the more they expect us to betray them, which just frustrates everyone when we don't. It's almost like they want us to be power-hungry maniacs. And? Ambassador Clark frowned. And you getting caught played right into their enemy's hands. You are being dramatic. We're at the brink of war. How's that my fault? You said it yourself. These aliens are incapable of friendship. It was bound to happen at some point. Just because something isn't your fault doesn't mean that it isn't your responsibility. Ambassador Clark rubbed his temples, massaging away his growing migraine. Your father is rolling in his grave right now. Here we go again. You could have been an admiral for Earth's Navy. Shit, you could have even stayed an elite bounty hunter for the Federation. But no, you just had to be the king of a fecking pirates. Do you have any idea how bad that makes us look? Sol chuckled. Ambassador Clark narrowed his stare. What's so funny? I'm just flattered by all the attention. Don't let it get to your head. This isn't just about you. It's about humanity at large. Sol raised an eyebrow. Is it? I mean, sure, I raided my fair share of shipments, but I never targeted civilians. I only stole from shady business folk. The only innocent people I hurt are the one or two dozen planetary governors I seduced, and, and I fail to see how that could doom our species. That's the problem. You're not the only troublemaker. 
Right now, the three most notorious criminals in all the galaxy are human. And the Senate wants to make an example out of you all. Sol straightened his posture, intrigued. Really? Yes, the timing is awesome! Ambassador Clark paused, taken aback. No, it's horrible. This puts into question every alliance we've built, almost like we've been deceiving everyone into trusting us. Now, even our closest trade partners are starting to doubt us. Whatever. Who are the other two? Do I know them? Probably not. The first one was a rogue mech pilot known as the Junkyard Angel. He was a genius in his field. The first human to make it into Federation's mech suit battle school. Unfortunately, he dropped out to become a vigilante of sorts. Sounds like a badass. It's not as noble as it sounds. He literally stole a warp core and threatened to blow it up during his escape, holding an entire planet hostage. A literal act of terrorism from what was supposed to be a most gifted pilot. That makes him seem cooler, in my opinion. Ambassador Clark swallowed down his irritation. Scalding him wouldn't fix his attitude. It didn't work when Sol was a teenager, and it wouldn't work now. Furthermore, many people back on Earth held the same opinion. Clark himself didn't even know what to believe right now. He simply ignored Sol's irreverence and said, None of this would be a problem if it weren't for the third criminal. He's the one who threw a wrench into everything. A professional wrestler known as Tyson Alpha. No way, said Sol, perking up. You've heard of him? Of course, that's humanity's champ. How the goody two-shoes like him get into trouble? He suplexed a bully diplomat during a press conference. Crazy, huh? Uh, did he just snap or something? Apparently. While promoting a long-awaited rematch, the diplomat kicked Tyson's dog due to a misunderstanding. It took over 20 guards to stop his rampage. This was being broadcast in front of trillions, and most cultures don't understand our respect for pets. So now half the galaxy thinks we're unstable lunatics. Sol nodded along, impressed. What a hero. Will you please take this seriously? It's a diplomatic nightmare. Those bullies control a significant portion of the Federation military, and they've been waiting for any excuse to crush us. They've even tried to kill me once. I don't blame them. They hurt a poor dog, and all you care about is keeping peace. You have it coming, really. I'm trying my best, jackass. Sol smirked at the outburst. Ambassador Clark let out a heavy sigh. Being sleep-deprived these past three weeks was starting to weigh on him. He had settled trade disputes, brokered peace between warring planets, and even shrugged off assassination attempts, all without losing his patience. Sol, however, was the one person who could actually get under his skin. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap. Are you? Sol grew somber, lowering his voice. I get it. You think I'm a feck up. All my dreams were a lie. His eyes grew vacant, as if remembering the people who died in front of him. Oh, I should have known my place, and then no, I never even tried. So, please, no, I want to hear it. Showing up to say I told you so isn't helping. Isn't more like pouring salt in the wound. After getting my crew blown up, having my allies betray me, and then facing prison for the rest of my life. The last thing I need is some rule-following nerd trying to tell me why I'm such a loser. Ambassador Clark stayed quiet. He had never seen Sol brought so low. Their relationship had never been the best, but this level of vitriol was new from him. His dreams of freedom really had been shattered. Watching a cheerful person grow this better didn't feel right. It was almost like the universe itself had lost a small part of what made it bearable. A stubborn and cocky part, sure, but valuable nonetheless. Ambassador Clark waited for Sol to calm down, gently saying, It took a lot of favors to arrange this meeting. Do you seriously think I showed up just to rub it in your face? Sure feels like it. You know that's not true. Then what are you hoping to accomplish? It's not like you're trying to break me out or anything. Ambassador Clark stiffened up. Wait. Sol leaned forward. Are you? Ambassador Clark panicked for a second. Don't get it twisted, I... You're kidding me. Shh. Ambassador Clark activated his earpiece. Sarah, did you finish your scan of the room? Yes, sir. There's a listening device inside his cell, but I've already disabled it. I also put a camera feed on the loop, so you should have some privacy now. Good job. Clark threw away his persona of ambassador, lighting up a cigarette with a candid gesture. Look, kid, I have to be frank with you. We've had our differences, but I'm not happy about this either. 
Many people back home actually think the same as you. They're hungry for war, and it's starting to get out of control. Over a dog, it's the principle of the matter. They see Tyson's arrest as bowing to the aliens again. I'm surprised you approve then. I don't. Doc took a big drag of his cigarette. He really needed the nicotine. We're currently in a double bind, and I refuse to go out like a chump. What do you mean? The Federation wants us to declare war. That's why they ignored treaties and abused grey areas to catch you. They've testing our limits. If we ignore it and back off, they'll just keep pushing us around. And if we declare war because of a pet, we'll look as insane as they think we are. But, but, there has to be a third way. If it doesn't exist, then I'll make it myself. You are out of your mind, Clark. Really? You of all people are giving up. I finally learned my lesson. There, there is no justice in this galaxy. Sol hung his head, growing sullen. In the end, anything goes. It doesn't have to be that way, shouted Clark. Sol flinched back with a puzzled look. Aren't you tired of this, begged Clark, his voice breaking from desperation. I've been flying from planet to planet non-stop, trying to prevent this madness, but I keep finding the same apathy everywhere I go. Billions are going to die. So, billions, and nobody on either side seems to care. So, didn't have a response. He had never seen his former guardian show this much emotion. Clark leaned against the wall, barely enjoying his cigarette. All of his fatigue bubbled up to the surface. He was tired. So damn tired. The only thing that he wanted to do was fall asleep and never wake up. Neither had the strength to talk anymore. The two of them just shared a minute of silence that felt louder than any words. This was the most that they had bonded in a long time. In a way, it was nice to be on the same wavelength for once, sharing an awkward glance that made them both chuckle. Clark then snuffed out what remained of his cigarette and said, Then your parents died. I didn't know what to do with you. Your father was my best friend, and I, and I couldn't leave his son to fend for himself, but I wasn't ready to raise a kid, and, well, you know the rest. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm sorry. Oh, I get it, Sol said. Oh, I didn't make it easy, either. For what it's worth, thank you, Clark smiled. You don't have to thank me. The universe is a really cold, lonely place as it is. Shouldn't we try and best to make it bearable? Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Then help me stop this war. Ow! It's not like I can do anything about it. That's not true. The key problem right now is the imprisonment of Tyson Alpha. You're heading to the same prison as him tomorrow. So, if you manage to break him out... Sol widened his eyes. Our side wouldn't have a reason for war! Clark nodded. Exactly. And we would have a plausible deniability, all without losing face. This is completely off the books, though. Not even my superiors will know about it. But me and my team will back you up as much as we can. You have a month until we go to war. Afterwards, it'll be too late. This is nuts. Is escape even possible? Clark pursed his lips, afraid to say. It's never been done before. Sol hung his head. But, continued Clark, if anyone can do it, it's you. But it's uh, not very reassuring. Look. You're at rock bottom, I get it. But you and your crew are fighting for something. Freedom, justice, call it whatever you want. The fact is, this galaxy is a miserable and downright cruel place. Now, you finally have a chance to change it. Are you really going to let your friends die in vain? Sol clenched his fist. Never! Good. Then what do you say? Are you in? End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.